Hello, my name's Gordon from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. And welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast and vidcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses over the last seven days. And it's sort of 14 days for this uh, this episode because yeah. we didn't have an episode last week due to the fact that I was in America, which we will come to in just a moment. Any news from you, first of all? Not from me. Okay. So let's get straight into our topic. Shall I go first? Yeah, you can go. So um, when we had our last episode uh, that went live, uh, we pre-recorded that one. And that's because I was in uh, Las Vegas on the Friday that it came out. Now, the reason I went to Las Vegas is to see a friend of mine called Mark Summers. Now, we've mentioned Mark on this episode, on this podcast before. And he's a very good friend of mine who now lives in um, Texas, in a place called Austin in Texas. And he was visiting Las Vegas because there was an expo that he was exhibiting at. So I went out there to to see him, uh, spend a bit of time with him, visit the expo, uh, and basically just have a good time. And uh, we did. We had a great time. We had a uh, another friend of Mark's that was out there that uh, I've met before, a guy called Danny. You know Danny? Yeah. Who is a an award-winning school teacher, and he was having his birthday while we were there. So we did lots of sort of celebrating of that, which involved a bit of alcohol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't actually drink a lot. Um, it's very rare for me to drink. But um, when I was in Vegas, I, I, I actually drank quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so we went to see some shows. We saw a couple of Cirque du Soleil shows, Mad Apple and Car, which was amazing. Uh, just me and Mark on that one. And we went on a backstage tour for that, which was just phenomenal. I mean, the, the, the type of shows that are possible now due to computers and automation um, are just completely different to how they would have been you know many many years ago even even 10 years ago you know the most sophisticated show we had at the time sort of 10 15 years ago actually a bit more than that uh, would have been starlight express i think that was one of the most technical shows i can think of um and that was pretty technical but then you go and see something like car the stage or one of the stages there's nine stages in this show the, the proscenium is nine stories high and it has a stage that comes up. It can rotate 360 degrees. It can also rotate up. It can also um, go this way and this way, as well as going forwards and back. And it can also go up and down. And there are people on the stage at the time when it's doing this, which is just madness. You have to be so focused and to remember, because it's turning this way when it's vertical, you have to remember that this is up. And then as it's turning, you need to remember this is now up. And uh, it's so well choreographed. But um, it's on at the MGM Grand. It's been there since 2005. If you get a chance to go and see the show, I highly recommend it. It is really, really good. I recommend you go watch it as well because I think um, you'll enjoy it. Uh, We also went to a brand new show, which was called um, uh, Awakening. And that was at the Wynn Hotel. And a friend of mine who lives out there now and works out there, different friend, a guy called Tim Clothier, he builds illusions. And he built a lot of the illusions that were in this new show. Uh, it opened Monday a week ago. So when I was there on the Monday was the day it opened. And we got to see it on the Wednesday, uh, myself and Mark. Uh, and another highly technical show. It was a real, real spectacular spectacle um they had flooring that was it was all in the round for a start which was really unusual and the flooring had sort of led panels on it so they could light up and uh, you know like projection not projection but they could show patterns and things and the stage had three sections a middle section uh, that could rotate clockwise anti-clockwise come up and down uh, an outer section which could rotate clockwise, anti-clockwise, come up and down, and was also split into six sections, and each of those sections could come up and down as well. And then there was an outer, outer section, 
which stayed still. It was just like a walkway going all the way around it. Um, there were lots of puppets in the show. Um, it was a really interesting show to watch. Um, Sounds like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. had lots of uh, really good food to eat. We went to two of Gordon Ramsay's restaurants there, Hell's Kitchen and Steak. Uh, I also went to the... Um, Eiffel Tower restaurant, which is sort of halfway up the Eiffel Tower that's in uh, Paris Hotel. Uh, and I saw a magic show as well, a guy called uh, Pharrell Dillon, who I hadn't met before, but uh, he was uh, he was very good as well, comedy magician. Um, and I also went to the convention centre and visited the convention that Mark was exhibiting at. Um, and that was, that was interesting. It was a wedding convention. And Mark was is exhibiting his props to you... Uh, products, all of his little signs that he does, which are really high quality. Uh, we've mentioned those on this the podcast before. Um, so one of the things I took away from my trip is how different things are over in another country. Very and how, much. how, for example, Las Vegas is very different in the way that it, it runs and it works. Um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a city that is open 24-7 for gambling mainly uh, and the way that they get you to come into the casinos is they give you free drinks when you're gambling they have the shows to entice you into the casino and of course the show theatres are sort of buried within the, the hotels so you actually have to go through the casinos to get to the theatres you know it's all been carefully thought out and it reminded me a little bit about um, sort of like a grocery store a supermarket mm -hmm. because they do little tweaks and they move things around in their stores so that they can get the most amount of sales. So, for example, when you go into a, a Tesco, which is a, uh, a supermarket we have here in the UK, uh, you go in, you see all the fresh fruit and the fresh products and the, um, the, the sandwich section, you know, where you can get your, your meal deals and so on. And that's the first thing that you see. So... You sort of, you look at it and you go, oh, okay, yeah, we could do some fresh fruit, you know, that would be nice. I'll grab some of that, even if you weren't thinking of getting any. And then all of the, the regular stuff, like the milk and the bread and something, is hidden at the back of the store. So you have to go through everything to get to it. And it's a little bit like that in Vegas, where they sort of lead you through the casinos before you get to anywhere. If you want to go to a restaurant or you want to go to a bar or you want to go to the theater, you have to go through all the casino, you have to go past all the machines and all the people who are winning money and all the people who are losing money. And they try not to have as uh, many straight lines either. <clears throat> so that's then, true. Because otherwise it means you have to weave in and out and you have to go around all the machines. Yeah, and get enticed by the machines and the sounds they make and the bright lights. Um, I, did, I did play roulette. Uh, I spent about $250 on roulette, uh, but I did come away with $246. So I lost $4 in total the whole time I was there. Uh, but I got about seven drinks, which were all Baileys. So, I, you know, with the price of things out there, I'm, I definitely was in, in the lead. <laughs> I was definitely winning. Uh, and Mark enjoyed his roulette as well. Uh, his favourite number being... 18. 18, very good. <laughs> he was also doing well with 20, and I think he was on... Anything around 10, 18. 12 as well, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a great trip, and it was um, it was nice to get away. It was nice to have a bit of time. Um, I took the laptop that I purchased from Taylor with me so that I could sort of keep track on what my businesses were doing. I was making sure I was checking my emails... Um, I had my phone with me, although I made sure that my um, phone signal was off so that I would only be able to use it when I was in a Wi-Fi area. Um, Which isn't hard to find. And I wouldn't be able to get calls <coughs> coming through to my phone because I didn't want to be disturbed because of the time zone changes, you know, because I didn't want people ringing me at sort of what was a normal time here and three o'clock in the morning in Vegas. Um, but I was more than happy to make sure I was on Wi-Fi so that if any of my family needed to get hold of me, they could, you know, contact me using FaceTime or whatever. Um, which gave me a bit of time to sort of step away from the business just for, you know, a short period of time, a few days basically, uh, just to refresh the batteries, come back with renewed energy. 
um, without making, you know, while making sure that the wheels weren't coming off by by ignoring it completely. Um, so yeah, I had a great time, um, uh, and you know, there may be opportunities to go back next year, and I think both of us would like to do that if that came yeah, along. Definitely. So yeah, that was my trip, and that's the reason we didn't have an episode last week. So cool. um, lots of learning, lots of stepping away, a little bit of relaxing, and having lots of fun, and eating and drinking way too much. <laughs> cool. So my topic for this week is the TAB member map. Now TAB stands for the admin bar. Oh. It is a, a Facebook community a Facebook group community with 6,000 plus members, um, all that are WordPress mainly, but more and more just based on web web designers, web developers, agency owners, anything to do with kind of websites and stuff, although predominantly focused on kind of the WordPress area, but there are people that do things in, in So it's just industries. a community, it's not a product as such? That no. People have, it's just a community. What does, what does TAB stand for? So the, 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 ad, ad, the admin bar, that's what yeah. it's TAB. Oh, so the bar as in like a bar you would go and have a drink at, not yeah. as in a, a, a bar on the top of your well, computer. Well, that's where it came from originally, because obviously with WordPress we have the admin bar. At the top of the, yes. the website when you're editing it and viewing yes. it. Got it. So that's where it originally came got from. It. And obviously it's got you know different connotations with a bar being somewhere you hang out and stuff like that. Um, and it was set up by a guy called Kyle. He's an awesome guy. He's from Texas as well. Oh. He's he's uh, over near nearer Dallas. Um, he's just on the outskirts, I think. And he obviously there's six thousand people, and there's people from all around the world. So he came up with the idea of you know putting all of these people on the map. So he called it Tab on the map. Okay. And what he had is he had he had an air table, and he had a form that people just put in their city, their their country and their name for whatever, and so people know who it is. Um, and it went all into this table. He then exported it as a CSV, and he imported it into Google Maps Studio mapping system type thing. And it worked, you know, it worked fine. But it's a manual process, yes. right? So okay. every time he wanted to see an updated map, he had to export the the table and, you know, re-upload it. And hope something didn't break. Yeah. Um, and something I've been working on with my personal website recently is putting markers and stuff onto a map so for example all my check-ins i have a map that has all of them on there you can click on them it shows you data and, and information about the check-in photo you can click to see the actual check-in itself um and so obviously i've just i've I had literally just created and built something very very similar to what might be useful for the admin bar so i reached out to Carl and said look you know I, i've just built this um you know it, it's pretty much copy and pasting bar changing some some things you know changing where the data basically comes from um you know would this be of interest and you know I, for me it was a way to give back to the the admin bar community because people are very very helpful always looking out for you always giving you you know the advice and experience that they've had um so i wanted to give back to the community so i i built this for the admin bar we had a, a lovely form where people could submit their locations we imported all the historical data we had a, a nice map which matched the admin bar theme, which is mainly dark uh, theme and like a yellow accent. Um, and then we had some stats as well. I managed to uh, write some code to pull out the countries. So we, we had a ordered uh, grouped by uh, countries and you could see the count and the country and also grouped by continents. So, you know, which continent has the most people. Uh, and then also when the last person was added to the map. So it automatically just took the 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 most recent published date and obviously it, it would either say like two minutes ago remember added two minutes ago remember added an hour ago whatever uh, which is also quite interesting because you can see it's obviously been a added to recently and we've got at the time of um you know of, of going going live it's on about 800 and something which is quite a lot obviously there's six thousand people in the facebook group not everybody is active not everybody wants to share their location yeah um but it, it turned out amazing, you know, you have hundreds and hundreds of these little markers that you can zoom into, you can see, people can find people that, you know, live live near them that they didn't know, you know, were, were around in their area, you know, um, you know, making connections, um, which was which was very cool. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just, it was just really cool to see. One thing I did have to uh, kind of debug, 
halfway through was that people were submitting their location and their, their name twice because they would submit it and it would auto redirect to the map page. They would zoom in. Oh, I can't see myself. Okay, I'll go back and okay. I'll go back and do it because obviously it didn't go through. Now what had what was happening is it did go through but the issue was that they were stacking on top of each other the markers so people that had the exact same address so normally people like if you put in new york city new york uh, and then obviously united states it's got like a central position hasn't it um yeah what i was doing is when they were submitting i was using a google api to extract the latitude and longitude which is what you need to map them onto the, the map map them onto map plot them onto the map i guess is probably a better word um and obviously these people were getting the exact same coordinates and so they were being stacked on top of each other. They were being rendered, but you just couldn't see them because the mo the oldest person was the person that would you, you you would see. So what I had to do is I had to write a short uh, function and basically to check to see uh, does the current latitude and longitude is it already in the list that I've already generated? And if it is, then it takes the coordinates and it times them by negative. Uh, I think it was like 0.002 to plus 0.002 so anywhere between that which changes it you know by like i don't know a couple of meters maybe like 50 meters or something on a map which doesn't isn't very far when you're looking at it on a grand scale but it's enough that you can see the difference um which meant and you can see there's more than one pin so they cluster rather than yeah. just all going on top of each exactly. other exactly um which means that some people will always change so one person will always be in that exact coordinate and then all the future people will all slightly get different coordinates every single time you load the map because it randomly chooses a number um, and it's something that obviously needed to be addressed and I actually ended up using that for my personal website as well for the code that I wrote and it was very useful because it meant that I could actually see how many times I checked into somewhere which is quite interesting because obviously I checked into David Lloyd's quite a lot so I have this massive cluster of <laughs> all just David Lloyd check-ins uh -huh. um, which looks quite cool on a map but yeah it was um, it was interesting um, and yeah a lot of people loved it I had a lot of people say thank you to me and um, you know say this is awesome I had quite a few people um, mention that they are interested in something similar for their communities so what I've done is I am going to release a tutorial and people can obviously um, become a member to access that tutorial and the tutorial is on snippets club yes it will be on snippet club um for people to access so obviously existing members will still get access to it and then anyone anyone that new that signs up will get access to it and then if they want me to implement it i can obviously charge them a fee to, to do that that's really good because there are going to be people who will want to customize it in some way or maybe they've got I'm, I'm just while you were talking i was thinking it would be quite useful for me on my magic website to have a map of venues so that if I have a client who comes to me and says we'd like to book you but we haven't got a venue yet I can send them to this page and it will show them all the venues around their area that they can then get in contact with which is a, a great idea but I wouldn't want to have all the data that I've got with the pins you know stacked around or clustered I just want the pin once because on my in in my situation, it's one venue. Yeah, it's not how many times I've been of to course. that venue. So it'd be all the unique venues rather than yes, all the accumulated. Which will also make the map cleaner as well. Yeah. Um, but that could be really useful to me, and that's a, that's a slight customization to what you have currently got. Um, but I assume there'll be sort of this sort of information will be in the tutorial when you when you sign up to yeah i mean i've tried to keep it so i originally built it with acf which is advanced custom fields and fluent forms which is the two uh plugins of choice that i prefer um but obviously there's gravity forms which is another popular plugin form plugin and there's also metabox again which is another popular uh, custom field plugin so i've converted my code to work with these other um, plugins as well just to give a bit of a broader reach for for people because I know that a lot of people have like gravity form lifetime deals that obviously yeah they've had for for ages and ages before fluent forms even existed and stuff so they just stuck with what they know yeah um, and again with the MetaBox license you know a lot of people didn't get the lifetime deal and so MetaBox was the next best option mm -hmm. um, and then obviously anything over and above that they can either customize themselves based on the code that I've kind of written or they can obviously hire me to, to write something custom for them. Um, 
but for the most part it's just about getting the data in the correct format and then you just pass it to the the map box um api and it kind of plots everything for you that's great it's a really good system it looks really good as well is there a link that we can post in the notes so people can see yes. what this looks like uh, so it's map.theadminbar.com okay and anyone can go and look at that yep anyone can do it um if you're not a member of the admin bar i wouldn't suggest you add yourself just because it's you know it would ruin the you know the admin bar members but you know if you do decide actually it's something that you do want to become part of then i highly recommend you join the admin bar there's lots of great people there's six thousand people in the, the, the facebook group from all areas of the world all areas of business so there's people that run 10 plus people agencies person agencies there's people that run one person freelancers yeah um so we'll put a link to the facebook group in the show notes and we'll also put a link to Snippets Club, even though the tutorial isn't there yet. But you can still subscribe now, and when it becomes available, you'll be one of the first people to get it. Yeah, so that was what I was working on this week. Yeah, very cool. It is very cool as well. I was really um, surprised and excited to see how it all worked. It, was, it, it works really well. Um, so well done with that. Thank really you. good. Anything else that you want to say for today? That's everything from me. So, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, apologies for not being here last week. Um, But if you have enjoyed the episode, then please like, share, and subscribe with all your friends so we can get lots more people watching this um, podcast and vidcast. We are available, as always, on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, You can also go to our website this week with .co.uk to find find out about all of our past episodes and anything we may have spoken about. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week at 1pm on Friday, as always. Until then, my name is Gordon and I'm from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. Goodbye. Bye.